Scandinavia. Huh. Awesome. <laughs> the book we read is Remedies and Rituals, Folk Medicine in Norway and the New Land by Kathleen Stoker. Um, it's a much more historical overview than any of your books. Uh, this is the front of the book. Um, it was written, like I said, Kathleen Stoker. It was published in 2007. And Kathleen is a professor of Norwegian at Luther College in Iowa and has written many other books on Norwegian traditions. Um, but she did research in, which I thought was interesting, talking about uh, Norwegians. Um, it became very uh, local. Uh, she did a lot of uh, research in the Norwegian colleges um, in Minnesota, in Iowa, Wisconsin, uh, Minnesota Historical Society, uh, Norwegian American Historical Association, museums in Iowa, and of course, um, different places in Norway. Um, and she did most of her research in diaries, letters, churches, personal interviews, and newspapers. Um, we kind of, for our themes, we kind of just did an overview at the top and then a few little tidbits in each section. Um, and it was thought that human knowledge and experience about folk medicine through time may have first been developed by observing animals. Uh, for example, seeing a deer lick a wound after chewing the leaves of sage and sparrow. Um, and it seemed that there were folk healers common to each community and that, um, or each neighborhood in 19th century Norway, they found at least one in each community. Um, and they also found that the Norwegians and the Indians believed, both of them believed that there was a spiritual component to health and that you needed to identify the supernatural component of the illness before it could be treated. And then this last thing, Mrs. I like this one, Mrs. Shoemaker Riley, which were healer. Uh, back in the days, um, actually in um, America, um, when the Norwegians first came <coughs> over, the few doctors that were around did a lot of amputation because they really didn't know what else to do. Um, and so on one such occurrence, a woman did not want her finger amputated, so instead she took a visit to Dr. Mrs. Um, Shoemaker Riley. And children were actually afraid of her because they saw her spending time in the forest picking herbs and things, and they thought she was a witch. Um, but this same little girl learned otherwise when she accompanied her mother to Mrs. Riley's house for a treatment on her mother's finger um, that a doctor had wanted to amputate. Um, herbs were steeped in hot water, and the mother was to wash her finger in the tea, and after a while, her finger was entirely healed, so this little girl was not afraid of Mrs. Riley anymore. <laughs> Um, and so then I'm going to go on to talk about uh, uh, kind of, um, I guess, the history and how um, the pasture uh, kind of became involved in the healing process as well. So um, in Norway, the association between medicine and religion uh, had ancient and international roots that date back um, to the country's 11th century conversion to Christianity. So um, around that time is when uh, a lot of pastures also uh, became involved in, in healing processes. And then in 1537, um, Lutheran Reformation came around and that left a serious void in the country's medical care um, because when the Lutheran Re Reformation started happening, um, a lot of uh, monasteries were being destroyed and therefore um, it was creating all this chaos in uh, what they, what the pastors, um, their healing techniques and what the people were used to. Um, and, and that was mostly just because Lutheran, um, Lutheran uh, religion and, and Christianity had, I think, different uh, beliefs on, on God. Um, and then in 1627 is when they actually um, decided that the uh, church ordinance in 1627 required all prospective ministers to have a university degree. So it was kind of something that it, you could already see the science and the, uh, you know, the systematic way in which we've 
we all know today, you can already see that in its evolution. Um, and then in the year 1687, uh, a Norwegian law required, required that all clergy um, to visit and treat the people uh, in their parish. So even if people, you know, didn't want to, even if they wanted to use their folk healer uh, for whatever for whatever was going on with them in 1687, it was a kind of a requirement uh, that the uh, clergy be involved. So this was after the fact that they had received their university degrees. Um, and then, but uh, this man right here, um, he was one of the clergy members, uh, his name was Bernd Julius Moss, um, and then he was unique uh, to this area because he actually laid the groundwork for a College of St. Olaf in 1874, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. That was something new to me, being new to Minnesota. She was, we were sitting there talking, and she said, St. Olaf? And I'm like, yeah. you're not from here, are you? Well, because the bird was like all natural, and I'm like, oh, 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 oh. okay. It's funny. Yeah. Um, uh, but anyways, the purpose of the school, uh, then as it is now, was to offer programs of liberal uh, studies to preparing students and careers of business, politics, and clergy. Um, and then interesting, too, was his wife, uh, Olene, also was very active um, in the health, as a health care provider within the community. Um, so it, women did serve a, a special purpose, even though it was at that time the clergy members were only men. They were not going to university to receive that. And a lot of the pastor's wives did a lot of the healing as well. A lot of people went to the pastor's wives. <laughs> treatment. Um, and then, so, uh, the book goes on to talk about the Black Book. Um, and so the Black Book, uh, ever, ever since it kind of has come into circulation, um, it's, it's raised uh, goosebumps uh, on everyone, um, and it was thought to have conjured up thoughts of the devil or evil or whatnot. Um, and then uh, it actually it had a lot of superstition and myth um, kind of related to it that people, people who actually owned the Black Book, um, they, they tried to give it away to family members or they tried to sell it. <laughs> Or they tried to like burn, like some people burned it because uh, it was bad luck apparently to die with the black book in your possession. Um, but basically, the black book was a compilation of um, different uh, rituals and different uh, spell, or I don't want to say spells necessarily, but just um, charms. Yeah, just Those different. Recipes. Yeah, different recipes for uh, different methods of healing and things of that nature. Um, and, and there were over 150 of these black books, and they were compiled between um, late 1700s and early 1800s. Um, yeah, but the, there could have been some before that, but that's just when most of them were compiled together. Um, and then a lot of it was actually, um, they were written down, uh, they were compiled as spoken by the word of mouth. So it was something that was kind of recorded as uh, these events were taking place. Um, and then it was actually thought that it was this, uh, that the Black Book was the sixth and seventh book of Moses, um, but those were actually left out of the Bible um, when the Lutheran, Lutheranism, Lutheran Church came in. Uh, those were just kind of left out, and, and it was partly left out too because it was just thought to be evil, evil witchcraft, evil witchcraft type of thing. So, yeah. Anything else? No. Okay. Um, and then, so after the Black Book, there was um, the Doctor's Books that started coming into circulation. Um, and, and I think, it w well, so first off, the Doctor's Book was, um, it was basically uh, the, the lay person's book of medicine. So if you were not a doctor, it was kind of like your like book of home remedies, like self-care, um, you know, things that, you know, all of us may have in our house, like, you know, like honey, it's great for the skin, you know, something like that would have been a really good example for this doctor's book. Um, and uh, it was very, very common in a lot of the households. Um, 
And partly, there, there's a lot of reasons why, but uh, the very the, the book for this 